when we have these types of conversations about sustainability, you know, we all know it's an abstract concept. So I think I wanted to get straight to it. And as it pertains to your specific business, you know, things like running a restaurant, making sure your supply chain is uh, in line. Can you just talk us through the main operational areas where this sort of very abstract concept becomes very tangible in how you do your business? Mm, thank you, thank you. Um, for, for us, the whole concept of sustainability, although it's still a bit extra at this point, but we already uh, see the sustainability as a very integral part of our business growth strategy to it. It's part of the growth. We grow with it. At the last 12 months, we've had, we've had a war, an ongoing war. Obviously, what's happening on the ground in Shanghai and across parts of China has presented its share of challenges. What challenges have you faced as far as your supply chain and how do you think that's going to be more sustainable moving forward as far as lessons learned? The biggest challenge for, for us at that time, for many companies, is the supply chain. Uh, because obviously it, it was very difficult. Uh, fortunately, our 35 years hard work in in-house uh, logistic and supply chain system uh, mm. was wonder and magical uh, things happen um, because uh, our logistics center, our truck, uh, all these are tailor-made for young China and they, they were amazing. And we have intelligent and digitized supply chain visibility within the company. So we know where are the stock and then we can move them around between the store and between the brand. And also, uh, not only we have some store that's still operating, we also are one of the very few companies that have our in-house delivery riders. Uh, so our delivery riders can deliver food to some customers and some employees. And when some of these delivery riders cannot serve, uh, we, our headquarters staff uh, with, with the culture of helping each other, our headquarters staff actually step in, use their own car and, right. and drive around uh, to deliver food. You know, the, the most senior person became part of the delivery team was the general manager of Pizza Hut. He was one of the <laughs> delivery riders. Um, well, so if, so um, it was, um, it was challenging, for, but for our company, uh, it became such a morale building uh, process. And personally, and on, you know, for the management team, we are so grateful that we have such amazing group of staff that we try our very, very best. And we, we talk about it in the, in the last uh, quarter earning release, and for 10% of the stores were, op were opening uh, during that time. Uh, they, they, they achieve 40, 50% of the sales for the entire market in China because the demand is so big. Mm. Um, but our team worked very hard to serve, serve our community. So yes, it was very tough, uh, but we have a very positive team. We take every challenge as an opportunity to become better and serve our customer better. Let me talk about scope three, because for you to be able to then measure your entire carbon, carbon footprint, you know, indirectly, everything else, let's put it that way, how many suppliers do you have? Just a rough ballpark figure before I ask the next question. Few hundred, few hundred surprise, yes. Okay, and how do you then make sure that you're talking to them? What conversations are you having so they then can abide by your own uh, sort of sustainability objectives? Very good question again. Um, I resonate your, your question that the scope three um, is the most challenging one for everyone and including for Young China because two thirds of our greenhouse emission uh, come from the purchase good. And that means from our suppliers. Hmm. And when we embark on the journey of defining uh, the roadmap and the inventory of how to, how to achieve that uh, greenhouse emission reduction, um, we immediately start the conversation with our suppliers and we seek their constructive opinions because uh, we have to do it together. We cannot do it alone. We know it from day one. So we, mm -hmm. we have the conversation and we get their opinion and then we put together a roadmap. So that's, that's point one. And, and the challenge is very profound. Uh, the challenges are very profound. We know that. But once we start the conversation, we realize everyone, 
every single of supply, they want to be part of it. They want to do it. And, and, and we, we, we are very grateful that we have a platform now within our own system that we can continue that dialogue and we'll continue to adjust the plan uh, because the direction is there, the goal is there, but how to get there, we have to learn at the same time. You know, it's just right. reality. So that's point one. Point two is um, we, uh, we set the greenhouse emission as one of the KPI for suppliers uh, to, to, to work with us. Um, so we want to achieve that target. We want our supplier to be committed to it. And, and, and it's one of the requirement. Um, it's not, it's not a, you know, big secret, uh, that, that might work. <laughs> and then <laughs> number three is, um, that number three is, uh, we're going to offer, uh, training sessions for ourselves and for our suppliers so that we can learn with each other and learn together. Um, and then last but not least. Uh, we launched a pilot program. We already did it with poultry and packaging suppliers to develop a carbon, carbon rope uh, footprint scorecard. Um, because, you know, while we are still exploring, it's always good to have this pilot and we, we have the very proper learning process. And then once the pilot program works, then obviously we're going to expand this. So step by step, um, I think our supplier and ourselves uh, we have reasonable confidence that we can um, we can have a pretty good chance with the commitment that we already have, which is uh, 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 greenhouse um, emission uh, zero carbon uh, greenhouse emission by 2050. Thank you. Right, and, and it looks like that that could be a good starting point. Just an update, I guess, on that when we have this conversation, hopefully again 12 months from now. As a final question, more to do really with what's happening with the world more than your company because of the war. I need to ask you because you're in the business. As far as the food supply issue of the world, that goes into a sustainability aspect too. Hmm. Do you think the world has a food supply issue? Well, I hope not. I mean, although right now the, the, the uncertainties in this world are just beyond uh, imagination of many clever people, uh, hmm. but but, um, you know, we, we try our very best, at least in China market, uh, to do what is right and what we can do. Therefore, uh, in terms of sustainability, um, it's also part of our big focus to utilize our intelligent and digitized supply chain platform within our system that we can minimize, minimize food wastage. I do believe that there's a lot of wastage uh, within the supply chain distribution system around the world that we can still improve so that we can uh, feed more people and we are going to do our part and but the technology of intelligent digitized supply chain must be in place and therefore it has been our focus for many years and we are very happy that we law uh, we, we, we 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 can share to the rest of our investor community that we are there. We have the system in place right now. Yeah, within enough, Young China there, system. Yeah. There we go. Uh, thank you so much. And hopefully, by the way, not just uh, feed people, you know, feed people healthy food too. Joey, thank you so much. We'll, we'll speak again, of course, and hopefully get update there. Joey Watts, CEO of Young China. Thank, thank you, so David. Thank you.